Please speak your Melinda. Who will that be? Well, Terrence, our last speaker of the day may look familiar to some of us as the cousin of not one, but two web alums and one current web student. He's spoken at TED Global and is also a trending topic on Twitter. Please give a warm welcome to Neil Harbison. Secondary effect was 
a backache because of the five kilo computer I was wearing every day. <laughs> also, we added different levels of sound depending on the saturation. If the color is very vivid, I hear it in a higher volume than if it's uh, unsaturated. I, I designed different models so that it became more comfortable to hear color. And I had, I had like 10 different electronic eyes. The main problem was that I was using the ears to hear color, so I was blocking a sense, and this was not allowing me to hear people. So I started to use bone conduction after some years, and this made it much better because I was able to differentiate visual colors from, I mean, visual sounds from audio sounds. So now it works with the chip installed at the back of the, my head that it's pressuring the bone, and then I hear colors through bone conduction, and then I hear the other sounds through air conduction. And then the next step is to have it perforated in the bone, so I'll have like a mini jack entrance inside, so I won't hear it through pressure, but inside the bone. The operation has been approved, and then the next step is to actually charge the chip with my own energy, because I still need to plug myself now, so what I want to use is blood circulation to charge the chip. So this is the, the main uh, thing now. What happened after some months, actually after some years, I started to feel that the software had become an extension of my senses. I couldn't feel the difference between the software and my brain. It became a new sense. And that's when I started to dream in color. My brain, in my dreams, creates sine waves, which are electronic sounds, which mean that I'm perceiving colors when I dream. So if I dream of the sky, my brain creates a, an, a C-sharp, an electronic sound. So that's when I started to feel that the software in my brain had united and created this extra sense. And actually, when I hear sounds, both um, parts of the brain activate. I had a problem in 2004 that I wasn't allowed to renew my British passport, because there's a law that says you're not allowed to wear electronic equipment in your passport, or your passport photo. And I said, well, what you're seeing is not an electronic equipment. It has become an extension of my senses, a, a part of my body, so you should allow it to be on my passport. And they said, no, no, no. <laughs> so I started a campaign to, to convince them that I felt like a cyborg. I felt that cybernetics and my organism had united and had given me this extra sense. And after some months, they finally uh, accepted this explanation and they allowed me to appear on my passport with the first cyborg. So this helps me a lot in passport uh, controls and in airports and in many other places. Well, when I was able to perceive colors like you, I felt that uh, the perception had not finished because there's many, many more colors around us that uh, humans could not perceive, but that they, they exist. So I decided to continue extending my senses and I, I added um, infrared perception and ultraviolet perception so now I can hear if this is working or not, because I will hear a note if there's infrared. It will also allow me to know if there's uh, movement detectors in a room, and perceiving ultraviolet allows me to know if it's a good day or a bad day to sunbathe, because if there's <laughs> ultraviolet, it might damage my skin. So, <laughs> so the aim is to continue extending my color perception and not to limit it to just the visual. My daily life has changed a lot. One of the main changes is the way I dress, because before, I dressed in a way that it looked good, and now I dress in a way that it sounds good. So, <laughs> for example, here yeah, I will be dressed in C, C major. That would be a happy combination. This would be dressed in D major. And here I would be dressed in a song. So I can dress actually in actual a song, and we're creating a, a collection of clothes that will be presented in Barcelona this year where there'll be different songs as a uh, close, so it will be a sa sound uh, catwalk. And, uh, for example, this is the first model. There's actually a, a tie that sounds good. It's the first part of the collection. It sounds like Sega Bodega's electronic music. This is how it sounds. <laughs>
has changed because now I can combine food on a plate so that I can eat my favorite song and I, I can <laughs> enjoy composing music with salads because they have lots of colors. But there's always the problem with the note C because we don't usually eat many blue or turquoise things so we need to find a food that has blues on it. Also, my perception of art has changed because I go to a museum and I can listen to a Picasso, I can listen to an Andy Warhol, so perceiving a museum is like going to a concert hall. So it has completely changed my perception of art. This is how the scream sounds like. And Andy Warhol, for example, sounds very loud because it has saturated colors and very specific notes. So it has changed the way I perceive um, visual art and also the way I perceive faces because uh, each face has a sound so I now instead of drawing someone's eyes and nose and mouth I write down the notes that I hear in someone's face and I create sound portraits because each face sounds different and um, I enjoy this is like the really sound portrait of Prince Charles here he was very worried <laughs> and uh, I created a sound portrait gallery with Places that people know the shape, but they don't know what exact colors they have, and then you can hear the different faces. So here's how a face would sound. These are green eyes. I created a rhythm. I, I would hear that as a continuous sound, but I, you can cut it and create rhythms with the sine waves of the different parts of the face. This is brown hair with the concert with someone's face as well. So we do a concert where I connect the eye with loudspeakers and then the audience cues and then I start uh, creating music by looking at the face and controlling the colors. And if the concert sounds very bad, it's the audience's fault because I don't have to the colors. <laughs> this is actually music transposed into, into color. It's the opposite. I can also paint music now because each note relates to a color. So I, this is, for example, Mozart's Queen of the Night note by, by note and there's a different voices so you can also transpose speeches into into color now three years ago i decided to create a foundation because i received many emails from people interested in extending their senses as well so i created the Cy cyborg foundation which has three aims one is to help humans become cyborgs by applying technology to the body in order to extend their senses the other aim is to um, defend cyborg rights because uh, there, there is a lot of uh, social um, problems by having technology applied to the body and the third thing is to defend cyborgism as a form of uh, art movement and a social movement an art movement where artists create their own senses and then through those senses they create artworks so part of the process of the artistic process is to create your own senses and then we're creating different projects like um, this one is with a choreographer. She's extending her sense of movement. Uh, she has two sensors at her ears that allow her to detect movement with her eyes shut. And also she has a well, it's simple infrared that vibrates when there's movement in front of her. And uh, she also appears in her passport with her extension so, so she can travel around the world with it. So she's experimenting new ways of moving without experiencing uh, movement with the body. Um, this is a passport so she, she can travel freely with her extension. We also extended her senses now to the back so that she can feel if there's movement behind her and that, that will allow her to extend her sense of movement and presence behind her. So if someone gets close to her at the back she'll feel, feel a small vibration on the left if someone gets there, another there. So this allows her to extend her perception of movement. There's also another project um, called the Earwork. It's exactly the same as this, but the opposite allows you to see frequencies. Uh, so you can go to a concert and you can see the main pitch of the concert in color on a small uh, screen. It also allows singers to sing in the right pitch. So if you want to sing an A, you need to see the color uh, green. If you want to sing C sharp, you need to see the color blue. So it allows singers to in their pitch perception, and you can also I see the, the color of voices. And one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state. So, 
also uh, we're doing uh, electronic eyes for blind people because it has different effects. So a blind person that has seen color before, if you use this, then it allows her, them to activate memory and to revisualize color. So it has a, an exciting effect that they can actually see color again. If you put a blue object and they know that that sound is blue, they can activate their memory and revisualize the color. We're also creating other electronic eyes to detect other things such as words so that you don't need to translate books into braille and you can use electronic eyes that read for you and you can hear them through bone conduction instead of blocking uh, sense. Also a fingerboard, it's a finger with a camera inside that can, you can tell the camera to detect whatever you want and then it can be transmitted through a, a kind of vibration. Also we are now working this year with an internal compass so that you can have the sense of north so you implant a small compass and then it vibrates when you're facing north. Now I don't really know where the north is, so I would maybe like to know where I am and then it would give me a new sense of orientation and also an internal light in case of total darkness. If you have a spare piece of the light, you can just click and then you have light. <laughs> So most of these senses are senses that already exist. There's fish that have uh, this sense of uh, creating light when they're in total darkness in the bottom of the ocean. So it's a sense that already exists in nature. The fact of hearing ultraviolet is something that insects and birds can do. The fact of hearing through bone conduction is something that dolphins do. Knowing where the north is is something that sharks can do. So we get really inspired with animals and the senses that already exist in nature. So we feel that becoming a cyborg is not becoming more like a machine, but becoming more like an animal. It's extending our senses to the level of other animal species, and I think that this will get us closer to perceiving the reality, nature, and becoming closer to other animal species. So I think, as Maya Angelou said, we are only as blind as we want to be. Thank you very much. <laughs>